Welcome back to Unlocking the Word. I'm your host, Candy McKee. I am so honored that you are here listening to this. It is my desire to help others learn how to fall in love with the Word of God. And you can only fall in love with your Bible if you read it and understand what it is saying and how it applies to you. Once you see how God speaks to you, I promise you will want to read it more. Hopefully by now you have listened to the previous episodes for the instructions and tools that are needed. Not only that, but the scriptures build upon each other in the book, and hopefully you'll begin to see a pattern in what you are reading. So let's begin. Our scripture reading is in Mark chapter 1, verses 35 through 45. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, but first, let's open our hearts with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and we thank you for this opportunity to be able to read your word. Lord, as we read your word, will you illuminate the scriptures, will you speak to our hearts, and will you show us what you want to show us? And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, We must go on to the other towns as well, and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Be healed. Instantly the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offerings required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. As a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. Look back over the scripture verses. Which one stood out to you? I will share my verse after we make our observations together. I'm doing this because I'm praying that the Lord will speak to you first. Remember to pause this podcast at any time if you need to finish journaling or to have a complete train of thought. Now that you have your verse, let's ask those observation questions. Who? Who is this about? Who is mentioned? In these passages, I saw three different people. Jesus, of course. Simon and the leper. The next question I like to ask at this point is when and where. And I like to ask these two questions together because it's very possible and most likely that the answers to the questions is going to be the same as the previous scriptures or the previous readings in the chapter or in the book. However, verse 35 does mention early in the morning as a when. But we can assume that these verses are still in the same time period as the other scriptures that we have already covered in previous podcasts. For where? Jesus is still traveling throughout Galilee. Now for what? What is going on in these verses? Write them down. Some notes I made, Jesus got up early in the morning to pray. 
he went alone to spend time with the Father. But then Simon came looking for him. Jesus then tells Simon that he needs to travel on to continue to preach to the people, because this is why he came. Following this, Jesus is preaching when a leper man came to Jesus to be healed. And Jesus healed the man. And then the leper turns around and tells everyone what Jesus had done, even though Jesus told him not to. So what did you take note of? Is it the same as myself, or did you notice something different? If you have a slightly different perspective, then that's great, because maybe there was a detail that stood out to you that did not stand out to me. Let's move on. The next question is why? Why is this being told to us? Why are these events happening? Or why are there only these events being told to us out of everything else that may have been going on? Take a minute to think about it and write it down. As you think about the why you wrote down, let's ask, how? How is this being illustrated? How is this being illustrated by the author? How are these events taking place? Answer the questions to the best you can. At this point, I'm going to ask a new question, and that question is, what is the author trying to tell you? This is an important question to think about, and I'll give you a moment to do so. And don't forget to look for any repeated words. Now that you finish answering the why and how, I'll share my answers with you. Again, if they're slightly different but in the same context, then it's okay. First, the passage begins with Jesus getting up early in the morning to pray and to connect with the Father. The next thing I notice is that Jesus is telling Simon that he needed to continue to travel so he can reach all the people that he possibly could. But then the story moves to Jesus healing the leper. But this healing is a little different. All of this is to continue to show us who Jesus is through these stories and events. Look back over the verse that you wrote, and let's ask ourselves, what does all of this mean to you and to me? The verse that stood out to me was verse 40, and it said, A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. And of course, we read on and see that Jesus says that he is willing and he does heal the leper man. There is so much to learn from this grouping of scriptures. I could take almost every verse that and the Lord will speak to me about each one of them. But at the same time, they all fit together as a whole and God still will speak to me. As I look at verse 35, it said Jesus had demonstrated that there is a need to make the time to get alone with the Father. Jesus made the human effort to seek after the Father. 
Jesus could have used the same excuse that we tend to have, of that I'm just too busy. I'm too busy working. I'm too busy doing ministry. I'm too busy doing whatever it may be to get alone to pray. Now, I know you're probably asking, what does this have to do with verse 40? Hang in there with me for a moment. Because the scriptures transition, and Jesus had said that he had came for all, to preaching the good news. And then we meet the leper. The leper sought out for Jesus. The leper knew that Jesus could heal him, but it was his pursuit of Jesus that moved Jesus with compassion that he healed the man. We can move Jesus with compassion in our pursuit of him. Jesus already showed us as an example in his pursuit of the Father by making the time to pray. And he did it early in the morning when no one was around and he was alone. This is all that Jesus wants from us, to pursue him. He wants time with us. So when we intentionally make time for him, he can't help but be moved with compassion for us. Think about it this way. A little child who's not typically affectionate crawls up into your lap and looks you in the eye and says, I just love you, followed by the biggest hug their little arms can give you. I don't know about you, but my response just may be, what do you want? Because it's yours. And yes, that's how kids get a bowl of ice cream. This is Jesus' response, that he loves us so much that he is moved with compassion for us that we can ask him for our greatest desires and he just might give it to us. But it starts with us seeking him because we love him. Now I realize I just shared a whole bunch with you, but this is what I received out of these scriptures because it started in verse 35 where Jesus went and spent time with the heavenly father. And then we see the leper pursuing Jesus because the leper knew that Jesus had the power to heal. But it was the pursuit that the leopard was, but Lord, I'm begging you and I am kneeling before you to heal my body. This is what the Heavenly Father wants from us, to come to him and just say, Lord, I love you. I know you are the all-powerful. And if you will this in my life, then let it be. And it's those times that Jesus just wraps his arms around us and says, I love you too, and I will this for you. This is a lot in just this one passage in Scripture. But it is so impactful to know that our Heavenly Father loves us and all He's asking from us is time with Him. It warms my heart when my teenagers come up to me and say, I want to spend time with you. Now this is what the Heavenly Father is asking of us. He wants us to come to Him and spend time with Him. Now take a moment And think about what the Lord was showing you before I shared. And even if you need to use what I've shared, and think about it and say a prayer or write down the prayer in your journal. Lord Jesus, I love you so much. Thank you for the reminder that you love me too and that all that you want is time with me. Thank you for showing me that you are compassionate towards those who seek after you. Jesus, I will work harder at being more intentional and spending time with you. Thank you, Lord, for this reminder. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me in this devotional. You're welcome to visit my website at candymckee.com. 
and under podcasts, look for the, this verse of Mark chapter 1, verse 35 through 40, and share with me what you received in these verses. I would love to hear from you. Join me next time as we move into Mark chapter 2.